all right guys welcome back um to our little tutorial situation that i talked about in the introduction video um so i've got my cup of coffee and i've opened up a new project in unity so um for anyone who's just watching along uh, you can either uh, follow along in unity or you can watch it and decide to follow along or you can just watch it and pick up the key aspects and implement them to your game uh, so there's a couple of situations that I thought about in between the two videos. Um, there are really three ways that I can make this tutorial. Um, and one of the situations is I basically start a new project and I code line by line from scratch. And to be honest, that's the way that I want to do it. Uh, but realistically speaking, knowing myself, I know that I won't be able to go through with something like that. I know that I'll make a couple of videos and then I'll just abandon it like I did in the past. And that is something that I don't want to do. I just somehow really want to go through, push through and get in the habit of, uh, you know, making some regular videos and, uh, you know, just sharing with people what I've been up to. So uh, even though that is the way that I think um, is usually most beneficial, um, I feel like that is something that I won't be able to sustain, and therefore that's not what I want to do. Uh, the other um, situation that I thought about was just to have, um, you know, go through my existing code rather than having a coding tutorials per se. Um, I thought that there would be some sort of code commentary, and that is something I've also enjoyed of late. And I don't know if it's because I've gotten a little bit better um, with Unity, but uh, that is something that has also helped me a lot. But I wasn't so inclined to do that, though I might, uh, at some point in time in, in, in the future, I might decide to switch back to this way. Um, so I thought of maybe using an intermediate way, uh, something in between, um, where I'm not coding line by line, but at the same time, I'm not just doing code commentary so that you guys can follow along as well. So uh, here's what I decided. I decided I'm going to make a, a new project from scratch. Uh, and we're going to start making this game from scratch. But when it comes to the scripting, what I'm going to be doing is I'll have my other project open right here. Uh, I will be using the same script structure and the same scripts. Uh, I'll be dropping them in. Uh, but I will be explaining each line as I go. And obviously, since these scripts, for example, uh, the car movement script, this is the first one that we're going to be looking at. Now, they're going to have a lot of things that are not going to be uh, necessary in the very beginning of our course. For example, audio and, uh, you know, pause menus and countdowns and things like that. So we're not going to be talking about them. We're not going to be needing any ads in this tutorial as well. Um, so uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, starting off with these scripts. I'm going to be throwing them in there, but at the same time, I'm going to be walking you through it. I'm going to be removing or commenting out every single thing that you don't need uh, at the current moment. And hopefully, hopefully um, in this procedure, we'll be uh, we'll slowly start um, building our, our code base um and moving forward in such a way. Now, uh, I've got this little um, car pack open right here. Now, this is a free pack. Um, I use this taxi here in your scene. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just import that. You can import the same pack, simple cars pack, or you can go and get another one. Uh, there's many cool free packs out there or paid ones if you would so choose. Um, so yeah, um, that's my approach. Um, do let me know. Uh, while this is loading, yeah. So do let me know if uh, what you think about this approach. Um, because to be honest, um, I hope that this will be helpful. Um, but I do know that I really cannot go through, um, you know, uh, I really won't be able to go through line by line. I've tried that before, and it just hasn't worked out for me. Um, but uh, maybe at a later time, for sure, I'd, I'd love to give that another try. So for the time being, all I've done is I've gone on, uh, gone ahead and made a scripts folder. And we'll be starting with our first script. Okay, so we're going to call it car movement script, just like I have over here. So you can go ahead and make a new C sharp script. Uh, I'm going to call it car movement script. And uh, let's just fire it up and start coding. Now, while that's loading, I'm going to go ahead and um, copy my uh, pre-existing code. Um, now, I, I just want to say before we get into this whole situation, um, to be very honest, I do realize already, um, you know, since I said that it, this, uh, it's been uh, a while, I mean, I, I started working on this project about, let's say, two months or three months ago, and I've just progressed um, so much. I've gotten in so much new information that I already 
I see some problems and some issues um, in this code. Uh, I'm not so bothered to go back and change it right now, but while I'm going to be walking you through it, uh, I might be making some changes, but for the most part, I'm going to be flagging you guys, just letting you guys know that uh, these are the places where I would do things differently now, because there are certainly plenty of them. Um, so yeah, if I do decide on going back to this crazy cabby project at any point in time, um, I will be making those relevant changes, so I will let you know. Now, this is our blank new empty script. I hope you've got one ready as well. Now, I'm going to throw in a lot of code, but do not go crazy. Do not go crazy on me. I'm going to uh, go step by step and explain to you what's going on and what is required and not required and why I'm doing what I am doing. Okay, so uh, I've dropped in my code. Now, before I start um, going into the code. Let me try and explain some situation here. Okay, so just for the sake of explanation, I'm going to go ahead and make a 3D cube. Um, let's see. Um, let's scale it up a little bit, <clears throat> like so. And um, I'm going to drag and drop my car in here. Uh, now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just kind of going to be walking you through the logic of what we're going to be doing, and then we'll look at the code. So I think it'll be a lot more um, helpful. Okay, so let's just uh, consider the situation for now. Okay, we've got our little car and we've got our road. <clears throat> now, uh, in the game uh, that we uh, we saw um, in this one over here. Um, so if I just hit play one more time, very quickly. Uh, okay, so we've got our little car um, and we've got three lanes. And you can go like so, okay? And you can jump like so, okay? Uh, so this is just like a quick little refresher of what we're trying to do. We've got collectibles, we've got obstacles, we've got some different environments. Um, so yeah, this is what we're trying to do, all right? So here we've got our road and we've got our car and we've got three lanes, okay? So some of the things that we need to think about is, uh, first of all, uh, when we click the right button per se, or in the case of a mobile game, uh, when we swipe right, we're going to be moving right, uh, middle, and left. Okay. So, uh, how are we going to do that? That is something that you should be thinking. How are we going to make sure that the car doesn't go right after it's already in the rightmost lane? Uh, it's not going to go left after it's already in the leftmost lane. Okay. So those are some uh, issues uh, that we're going to be thinking in terms of our code. Uh, furthermore, um, what else uh, is going to be the issue? Um, we're obviously going to be moving the car forward. Uh, now, there's a couple of um, uh, design issues uh, that you should be thinking about right now uh, that most endless runner type games uh, think of. Now, there's a couple of different ways. You can either move the car forward, you can keep the road stationary, or you can keep the car stationary and you can move the road and the environment backwards. Both of them, if done perfectly, will create the same illusion. Uh, now, at this stage, uh, like I said, I'll be I'll be putting up some warning flags for you guys. So, um, with my newfound knowledge, uh, or with my existing advanced knowledge, um, what I would do is, if I were making this game again, I would keep the car exactly where it is. Oops. Um, <laughs> um, so I would keep the car exactly where it is, but instead I would move the whole environment back. But in its current state, um, the crazy cabbie code, what I was doing was I was moving the car forward and the environment um, stationary. Now, I haven't found uh, or come across any issues with this, uh, with, this, um, with this approach, but I just feel like, uh, you know, I just felt like letting you guys know because most of the people, um, they do prefer to, um, for example, have the second approach because um, they say that apparently uh, it avoids certain issues, uh, especially when you're talking about uh, large numbers. For example, when the car keeps going forward and apparently it goes into some, uh, you know, large Z values, so to speak, um, then um, it causes problems. Personally, I didn't see them. Uh, I never had a problem. Uh, but I would also like to say that every time the game would, um, you know, game over screen and it would reset, I was resetting the position back to zero just to make sure that, um, you know, everything is okay and I wasn't just continuing off from where the car uh, crashed and such. Okay, so those are just some things that um, we need to think about. 
Now, I also want to talk about the movement of the car, okay? How are we going to be moving? Now, there are a lot of ways to move uh, in Unity, okay? Um, and at this point in time, I'm going to be using the most nitty-gritty, uh, probably the ugliest way uh, that I knew at the time and that um, that I still would use, uh, you know, if, if I was prototyping the game. Um, but I'll just go ahead and um, uh, tell you guys a few other ways where, how you can move the car uh, as well. Now, in the example, uh, in this game, in this code, uh, we're going to be directly moving the transform. So every game object has a has a transform, and it's got a position, rotation, and a scale, right? Um, so what I'm doing is, for the most part, uh, I'm going to be, uh, as I remember, I'm doing transform.translate. As you guys might be aware of, it directly changes the um, the position, uh, the transform position. Um, so when I hit right, I move it, you know, I move it on the x-axis to the right or the left, uh, depending on what I'm pressing. And all the time, I'm making my car go forward uh, in the z-direction. And obviously, as you get further in the game, the speed with which it's going forward increases and all that logic comes in a little bit later. Um, so, yes, at the moment, uh, for the most part, uh, I think I was using a combination of both. We'll have a quick look. But um, for the most part, I am going to be uh, using transform.translate, especially for the lateral movement. Now, this is probably not the best idea, uh, but that is the idea that I used in this code. Uh, a couple of other ways that you might want to think about character movement, depending on the specifications of your game, are... Hold on. Yeah, so a couple other ways that you might want to think about is using um, something called a character controller. Uh, I think um, Unity has a built-in character controller class as well. Um, this is especially nice if you're making a third-person, first-person, or some sort of RPG-type game. Uh, another way that you might want to think about making uh, movement for your character is nav mesh agents. Again, this is really good and especially good if you're um, looking for some AI pathfinding-type situation. Um, but I felt like both of those were a little bit of overkill, even though now I feel like maybe one of these or either um, of these would uh, have been uh, a better solution. But um, that is the case. Um, I'm currently using Translate, and that's what we're going to be using. I also feel that using transform.translate is really, if, if you guys are beginners and if you're listening in, that's probably really the um, easiest way to get started with movement. I mean, uh, the best and the quickest way to move something on the screen and get going with your gaming um, is um, game development is basically transform.translate. It, it seems natural that you just come in here and you change the X, Y, and Z position. And if you want to rotate the car like so or like um, so, then you just go ahead and change the rotation of the car. Um, so yeah, that was my reasoning uh, of, uh, of using that at the time. Okay, so let's see how we are doing on time. We're 13 minutes in. I've given you a little bit of code commentary, so I think I'm going to stop this video right here, and I will pick up with the code in the next video. All right.